Um, here we go. We're, we're at the qu- there were questions here, and now they're gone. Well, you there must have pressed. Good, I guess I we've got trimmed them. them down. No, I, I guess I see I, them. N- no, something happened. They were here, and now they're gone. So well, I'll go to the one the that lead. I didn't think was going to be the first one. <laughs> I didn't do anything. At playoff cap, which franchise winning the Super Bowl would be the most legendary? This is a question from playoff cap. Which franchise winning the Super Bowl for the first time would be the most legendary? Playoff cap thinks it's Atlanta due to their curse in big games. Who do you think it would be? Atlanta's up there, but I I, I think the Cleveland Browns are the obvious answer to yes. me, right? I mean, it just again, they have a fan base and a and a history that's top notch. I mean, they have a history that will rival just about anybody in the history of football, you know, pre 1990s. But after that, it's just been an absolute crap show. So yeah, I'm going with the the, the Cleveland Browns there. What about you? You're going with them too? Yeah. I'd say the Browns. I mean, look, the Vikings had four chances. The Bills had four chances. The Browns have never even been to the Super Bowl. So I think that given how bad they were just a few years ago, especially if they would win it this year, Yes, that would be that would be gigantic. Who's second on that, that list off. to you? For for who's the next one? Like, are you is it Minnesota? Like Buffalo is the other one that comes to my brain a, a little bit because of like your same thing with your Vikings. Like the four Super Bowl losses is such a unbelievable good thing and bad thing that you know. Yeah, yeah I'd like to see them get one at one point. Yeah, I I. Uh... I think the Bills have a team that is better suited to doing it. I've just yeah. accepted the fact that the Vikings never will. They, they just <laughs> I, I know in in the core of my being that they never will. They'll always kind of hover, but they'll never land the plane, and that's just the way it is. All right, this is an it's important a nice purple question shirt you got from four twenty on to- well, that's just, it's, I like the shirt. Yeah. Four twenty ontology. Which members of the Buccaneers team slash front office Match to each character in the movie Goodfellas. <laughs> Name as many as you can in thirty seconds. Oh well, that's. I actually not put a little thought into this. Do you have any? Do you no. have any? Do you no. want to hear mine? No, I want to hear yours first. Go ahead. I, right. I, 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 let me For, look at the front office too as we do this. Go ahead. All right. Well, well, well I, I'm 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 starting mainly with players. I got players and a coach. Right. And, and I've only got a few of them, but but these are the ones that came to mind. Mike Evans is Henry Hill because he's so quiet he never talks, according to Tommy's mother. That's the perfect match there. Other than that, I don't know. What's Henry? Uh, you Tom never Brady. talk, Henry. <laughs> What's, yeah, t- he's so quiet. You never talk. Shut up. You're always talking. Um, <laughs> Jimmy Conway is Tom Brady because he's just like the mastermind. He's in charge of everything. Right. He's the guy that runs the show. Right. Antonio Brown is Tommy because he's a bad seed, although he has reformed himself a little bit. Tommy never got that chance because he got whacked the day he thought he was being made. Antonio Brown actually got made. He got his Super Bowl. He didn't get shot in the basement instead. Uh, that's kind of morbid. Um, and uh, Bruce who else Arians is there? has oh, got to be Paulie, right? Arians, no, no. I think Bruce Arians is Morris because he never shuts up. Man, Morris that's gets fair. choked out and killed. <laughs> that's not cool. I, I think he's he's more of the boss. Like they go, the, the Brady and all of them, they go to Bruce Arians to make sure, like, can we call this play? And he's like, you know, don't do that play. Don't embarrass me, or whatever he says in that line. And you know, whatever. That's he. That's the Bruce Arians. That's was that his name? I can't remember it. Uh, it's to Paulie, yeah, yeah, Paulie, Paulie. Right? Yeah, Paulie. Yeah. They're all Paulie. They are They're Paulies. All Paulie. Yeah. All... <laughs> How dare you say that? <laughs> uh, it's a great. That's funny uh, that right. they went with that. Uh, I like that little question there. That was a good do, one. Do you do you have any any other characters you want to jam in? Who would you be? The former, because you you used to be in the crew. You used to be in the Buccaneers crew. I know. I don't think I'm, you be? I don't think I make it there. I, I, maybe I'm uh, I'm the guy that shows up with the pink Cadillac and the uh, and the mink. Uh, <laughs> what's his name? The mink coat and the Cadillac. We, <laughs> or no, you're definitely not Jimmy two times because you, because you can't lose your spleen two times. No, so no, I, I can't that. speak right the first time to say it the second time, so I'm not him either. <laughs> uh, I don't think I made it to that right. movie. <laughs> Ton Squad 42. Why haven't the Vikings gone out and added a third receiver? There has to be a better option than Chad Beebe or BC Johnson. They loved BC Johnson not that long ago. He hasn't really developed into the guy that they thought he would be. They like Chad Beebe. Look, but really behind Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen, there is a drop off. And, you know, not that long ago, Patrick Peterson, who's now with the Vikings, said if Larry Fitzgerald isn't retired now, he's not retired. And I feel like Larry Fitzgerald is waiting 
for something. He's waiting maybe to see who declares themselves as high-end contenders. And his dad, Larry Fitzgerald Sr., longtime sports writer in Minnesota, said it's now been 10 years ago. Larry Fitzgerald, who was, by the way, a ball boy for the 1998 team with Randy Moss, Chris Carter, et cetera, that went 15-1. and Larry Fitzgerald Sr. said that his son is a Viking and always will be a Viking. And, uh, again, it's going to require, I think, the Vikings to come out of the gates hot. I don't think he's going to want to limit his options. I think hey, he's a free agent. He doesn't have to jump through any hoops. He can wait until the week of the Super Bowl and sign with someone if he wants to. Yeah. But I think he's determined to get a ring, and I think he's going to wait, and he's going to wait. He's not going to say a word, and we're not going to hear anything from him. There's no deadline that applies. He can sign with anyone at any time all the way through the postseason. But I think the Vikings may be – kind of unofficially holding a spot in the event that Fitzgerald decides by, I don't know, middle of October. Yeah. You know what? This team's good enough this year. Maybe they do have a shot. I'll come home for one more year yeah, right. and see if I can be the difference maker. I, I, I mean, I don't think that's a crazy possibility. I, I mean, I am interested to, to know what happens with Larry Fitzgerald. You know, I, I really am. I mean, uh, it's, it's kind of funny. We've heard nothing, you know, here. I mean, not a rumor, nothing at all. Um, I thought the Buccaneers at one point, but but they, but they have absolutely now, no right. need. They would have to have an injury. Yeah, that's right. Or if like Antonio or Brown didn't come back, maybe that's where he would have filled that void or something like that. I mean, that makes sense. But like, hey, wait, I want I want to get to that question from our Toon Squad Forty Two wh- about the third receiver. You know, listen, certainly you could make the case to maybe you'd want somebody a little more proven or, or better, whatever that is. But also. This is the, the reason they don't have a big time third receiver is, I mean, you can't pay everybody. You got to trim the fat. You got to know what your team is. They're a 21 football team, you know, and I mean that 21 personnel. It's two backs, one tight end, two receivers. That's how they play. They don't really want to get in first and second down into three receiver sets and do that type of stuff. So because of that, that's why they probably look for, you know, values at the third receiver position. They really they don't care about everybody getting the ball. They want the ball in Dalvin Cook's hand and Jefferson's hand and Thielen's hand and Irv Smith's hand and that pecking order, I believe, now that is officially gone. And within 21 personnel, the Kubiak-Shanahan scheme, that's what they do, and that's why I don't think they'll ever spend a lot of money as long as that offensive scheme is there on the third receiver. But you still need to have some you do. options. Definitely, no doubt. Beyond, and I'm looking, I'm looking at the – Depth chart now. I'm looking at the names, not the depth chart per se, but just the names of receivers, and there there are none that jump out. I know Chad Beebe has done some good things. They really did like B.C. Johnson a couple of years ago. He's got some potential, but there's a big drop from Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen to whoever else is there, and they better hope they keep the top two healthy. All yeah. right, uh, last question, very important one from 1980 Bills fan. What do you think of Brandon Bean's calves? And the, the photo is impressive. I, I don't know that we can confirm with 100% certainty that those are Brandon Bean's calves. First of all, the, it's a little Sasquatchy with that thicket of hair on them. But second of all, good Lord. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a thigh muscle that got attached to a lower leg. I think that's a shadow. I don't think that's like all hair there. I don't think he's... Sasqu- no, I see. There's he's hair. There's, hair. There's, no, well, I'm yeah. not talking about... I, I know the difference between a shadow and hair, Chris. He's he's got very hairy lower leg. <laughs> okay, thank you, doctor. Uh, they are impressive calf muscles. They are. You know, I, I mean, there's there's some real muscle there. There is. Now, it's that's not like that's some power calf muscles. All right, that's not a speed calf muscle. No, no receiver or running back gonna have a calf muscle that goes that far down and almost gets to the ankle. Right? They're gonna have like. Uh, uh, that calf muscle that's like a tiny little ball really high up towards the back of their kneecap and they're going to have an Achilles tendon that's that this long and that's why they can run and jump through the roof or like a real athletic wide receiver DB type of guy so Brandon Bean yeah he's got some power there I like that pretty good definitely going to be up and there's there only for so GM. much <laughs> there's only so much you can do to build a calf muscle much of it is just it either is or it isn't right yes yes there's there's some we could probably look at a guy like, let's just say, Odell Beckham Jr., and you'd probably be underwhelmed about the size of his calf muscle a little bit. He could do 90 million calf raises a day. It's not going to get much bigger. It's just going to get stronger and tighter, and maybe that way. But, yeah, there's only so much you can do. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights. 
from NBC Sports.